Like many of our adventures, we started the day with a stop for coffee. This time we stopped at Chester's Cafe in Chester, Nova Scotia. After getting our morning pick-me-up, we continued southwest down to the most southern point of Nova Scotia. Although Cape Sable Island is technically an island, back in 1948 it was connected to the mainland of Nova Scotia by a one kilometer long causeway. Many mistake this island for Sable Island, which is actually 175 kilometers southeast of the nearest point in Nova Scotia. To protect the nesting area of the endangered piping plover and other coastal birds, we made sure to stay away from the dunes and keep the dogs on leash. Watching the piping plovers dance in the waves always entertains me. Mind you, the dance of the plovers is not as cute as the cattle dogs dance in the waves. Many people come down to Hawk Beach on Cape Sable Island to see the white sand. For us, we came down to see the drowned forest. This is the remains of a 1500 year old forest, which many speculate died from the rising tides after the ice age melted. The large amount of tree stumps and exposed roots that are visible only at low tide is quite the unexpected sight along the coastline.
The waters around Cape Sable Island are infamous for the amount of shipwrecks. One noteworthy wreck was the steamship the Hungarian, which took over 200 lives in 1860. Shortly after this tragedy, a lighthouse was erected, being completed in November 1861. The current lighthouse is on a small islet just off the shore, and is the tallest in Nova Scotia at 101 feet tall. Although we would never guess that with only the base being visible this day. It seems Jackson didn't care for this old piece of machinery being on the beach. hanging out here in Cape Sable Island with my new friend Paradise, the lobster. While leaving Cape Sable Island, Mersey was a great sport and posed for some photos. 